All right, now that you've been playing with if functions some more, I think it's useful to start looking at it in terms of dealing with tables. Now here's a couple of samples for you to play with as you develop your if skills. So look at the, at the state table that we have here. We have a, a list of states with population, land, and water. Now as we look at this, uh, I think it's useful to kind of see that we've actually formatted it as a table, which we'll talk about later on in class. There's a couple of advantages for formatting as tables. One of the ones that I like is that if you do a formula, it will actually copy down for you automatically. So if I do the first test here, I do equals, and I'm gonna ask how many states have a million or more people. I'm gonna compare population and say is it bigger than a million. Once I hit enter, you see it copies down automatically. The other thing that's nice is that it changes the reference from B8 to the name of the column population. I can even use the same thing for doing outside of the table. If I say equals to the sum of the column for population, I can actually put my cursor right about here and you look closely, you'll see that my cursor changes to a little black down arrow. When I click now, you'll see it picks up the name of the table, table one, because I haven't named it yet, and the column population. Now when I hit enter, it brings me the sum of that entire column. So it's just a nice way of referring to things that's a little bit more stable than references. Back to the problem though. So what we have here is we're looking at how to very quickly do a couple of tests for my table. Now this first one here, you actually don't need to do anything with the if function. It all comes down to either a basic comparison or an and or or not kind of situation. So go ahead and try to work on it. Now when you work on it, I think some of the problems I typically see is people that start too fast. You try to leap all the way to the end. So for example, we see the next column which says, what states start with either A or C? And you might think, oh, I don't know how to test to see if it starts with A or starts with C. But you have to kind of break it down into pieces. The first thing you'll want to do is just get the first letter. So if you think back to the previous class, remember that the function that can get the first letter is just left. So now I have the first letter. Now that I have the first letter, I can go ahead and start actually playing with the, the test. Let's do the first test. The first test is either A or C. So let's just see if we get the test for A working right. If we do the test for A, we're just gonna say, is that equal to the value A? And then we have a true false result out of this. So I can see now that my first A's are coming out as true and the next C's are not coming out. So that's good, I'm in good shape. Now that I have it though, I need to also do C. Now if you have two tests, that means I need to have an and or an or. So I want you to th take some moments on your own and figure out which thing do you need in order to finish out this particular problem. Do you need an and or do you need an or? Also, once you write it, be careful to do the whole test each time. Just as a reminder, you cannot write an and saying something like this. Does A1 equals one or two? It doesn't work. You have to have the complete test here and you have to have a complete test here. Just sticking two in there is not gonna work. So in this example, you need to also have A1 equals to two. So just remember, you need to have complete tests for each of these. So go ahead and take a minute and try playing through these other problems. Okay, now that you played through the problems, let's talk about the sales commission. When we get into sales commission, we see we have another one of these tables that's gonna require us to do a couple different formulas to make our life easier on the back end. Once we write the formulas, we can just add new rows and have all the commissions be sorted for us perfectly to begin with. So let's go ahead and do the first. Commission rate's fairly straightforward. I have the sales in dollar and I have the commission rate for the sale. The thing that I'm not sure about though is what commission rate do I wanna pick? Do I need the high segment commission rate or the low segment commission rate. And again, if you're having trouble with these, it's really important to try and solve the problem first in your head before you try and do any sort of formulas. So if you look at January, what commission rate should it use? Okay, so hopefully you looked at the segment information. We see that this row has a segment of high, so I wanted the value of 5%. Whereas if I look down a little bit lower on row 20, you see I want the low segment. So this actually does need the commission rate to have an if statement to sort of distinguish between the high value 
or the low value. So go ahead and write an if statement that's going to pull in the commission, either the high commission rate or the low commission rate. For the next value, you're going to take that commission rate and just calculate the commission in dollars, which is fairly straightforward. The next column, you want to talk about how to make sure that they earn at least a minimum commission. In other words, if something is lower than a certain value, make sure they earn the lowest value. So in this case, C4 is our lowest value. Go ahead and write a formula that gives us 10 if the number is less than 10. Now we'll do the same thing, making sure they earn under the maximum. And again, at this point, you should be, you should be chaining the formulas. In other words, you're going to have a commission right here and a commission in dollars calculated at this point. This cell should use this one as its input. The next cell should use this guy's input, not him. Basically, we're going to keep on adding, subtracting, modifying until we get to the very end here. So giving the commission rate, making sure they earn less than the maximum, again, maximums up here, go ahead and give the value out. As a reminder, all the things up here will need to have absolute references applied. Next, you're going to just add 500 if they've got sales over a certain value. And lastly, you're going to give the commission, but then test to see if it was in 2006. If it was in 2016, sorry, 2016. If it was in that year, we want to take out 10%. So go ahead and take a minute and try practicing with this problem. All right, let's look at ranges now. So far, we've done things where you looked at a single value at a time. You know, we've done that couplet thing over and over again. These functions are a little bit different. These functions look at a range, so not a single value or cell. Instead, they're going to look over a range of cells. Here's a couple examples. Count if is fairly straightforward. All it does is look into a certain range and tell you how many times it finds the value. So in this example here, I have count if, the range right here, and I'm saying look for the value tx. And notice I have tx in quotes. That helps Excel know where the where the string starts and where the string stops. Count is fairly straightforward. If I come back over here and change one value, you'll see the count changes or changes back as well. More useful are sum if and average if. These ones are more complicated because they take three arguments, not two. The first argument is similar to count if. It simply asks, where do I want to look to find this certain value that I'm looking for? So in this case, I'm going to look in the state column to try and find the value Texas. But with this, I can't really take the state name, Texas, Idaho, California, and do a sum, average, any of that stuff. Instead, I need to actually look into a different range to do that addition or averaging problem. So what this says is look first in B15 to B19, the blue range, and try and find Texas. If it finds a match, then it's gonna move over to the C15, C19 range to do the actual problem of addition or subtraction. So in this example, I'm looking for Texas again, Texas here and Texas here, and the sum of these two together is 30. If I wanna test it out, I'll change this to Idaho, and now I see the value goes down. Average if is really similar to sum if. All it does is instead of just giving the sum is it divides the sum by the count to give us the mean or average. Now as you work with these, it's easy to get confused as to what does what. A good way to deal with this is under formulas, you have this insert function option. When we click that button, we're gonna get this nice formula builder screen. This gives me the sum if, but breaks it into pieces. Rather than typing the whole thing like I would before, now it's going to give me a box for each of the criteria that goes inside of here. So I can see I have range first, then my criteria, and then what I'm going to sum up. And it gives me a description of how each of these work in the second part. If you don't already have a function built, you can actually use this to insert one. If I do insert function and then type in sum, I can pick sum if and click the insert button. And now it lets me put in all the values for me. So it's a nice little tool. If you find yourself getting a little bit confused about all the different arguments and parameters, that will help you be a little bit faster. Go ahead and take a minute now 
and write formulas for the rest of this segment. Okay, let's go on to the next one. So for my range exercises, I want to show you one more example of how these functions would be really useful. I have a long list of data here, all the way from margin, sale, state, so a lot of data, a lot of information. And I want to quickly draw up a little table that gives me a sum of how many sales in each area, a sum of it, and an average of it. Go ahead and take a minute and try and solve this on your own before we continue as a class. Okay, let's talk about your solutions. Now, a lot of times with count if, people will be a little bit too specific. They'll say, all right, I'm going to look for the state, and they're going to draw a box over it. The problem with drawing a box over it, though, is that if you add more data at the end, it's not going to be included. So in this case, because all my formulas are on the side, instead of doing that, I might actually just do column D to column D. So this is a special reference that says pick everything in the D column and bring it back. So I'm going to look in the entire column, and I'm going to try and find AZ inside of it. And now I'm not going to put in quotes AZ like this, because I want to be a little bit lazier than that, and I want to actually be able to copy the formula down. So I'm just going to go F12. Now that I have 12, I can copy the formula down and have it work for each of these. Also, if I change one, you'll see it gets updated. And if I go to the end and add another one, you'll see it gets updated as well. Now that I have the count, let's do the sum. This is really similar to the previous one. I'm going to do sum if. I want to do the same range, which is the state table. Once I have the state column selected, I'm going to look for the value of the state inside of it. And lastly, I need to do the sum range. Now, I don't want to sum up D again because D just has words. Instead, I'm going to sum up the sales column. Now I have a very efficient little formula, which I can copy down and have work perfectly. Just as a reminder, though, this only works if your, st if your formulas are on the side. If you have them underneath, it's going to get cluttered and not going to work as well. You'll get Excel warning you about circular references if you put this information below the main table. So go ahead and do the average one on your own, and that should about take you through the instruction for the if functions.